Welcome back you lovely bums. Thanks for tuning in again. I hope you're all doing good. I wanted to talk to you about my yo-yo today. Like it was about three months ago when I first did a video about this. I did an unboxing, I took it for a few rides, I chatted to you guys about it. I've now ridden this bike like a bunch of miles and I feel like I'm in a better position to talk to you about how it performs, how it feels and that if you're in the market for a new bike, do you look at more mainstream brands or is it okay ordering a bike from China? If you go on AliExpress or other like sites, there's a whole minefield of like very bad quality carbon parts and I think that's where the bad rep for Chinese made stuff comes in. There's a lot of stuff that doesn't go through testing and that isn't like approved and it's maybe not that safe. I don't want to say it's all not that safe but there's definitely some stuff on there, especially handlebars that I know I could give a good squeeze and I'd probably snap them. So having ridden this now for like thousands of miles I figured we'd have a bit of a chat about the things I like about it, things I don't like about it. If you're in the market for a new bike maybe you'd be looking towards one of these rather than, I don't know, a Specialized. Because honestly, the price difference is humongous. So, here we have the Olio R12. It is their aero frame set. You can get an endurance-based frame set that's like a little bit, well, less aero and more endurance-based. But I love the look of this frame. I love the big aero tubes. I love all the weird like angles on it. It's just, it's just a meaty frame and it looks really cool. So I figured, why not go aero? I've been riding this bike for three months. I use it on the turbo, I use it outside, I use it in all weathers. I think the whole like winter bike, summer bike days are kind of gone. I'm gonna be honest, my stayer, I do wanna keep for a summer bike. It's very bespoke. But for a lot of people, you're gonna own one road bike and you want a bike to be an all year round bike. So that's why you go for a disc brake frame because discs, you wear down your pads. You don't wear down this beautiful carbon rim and that means your wheels last substantially longer. And if the only wear on your brakes is your brake pads and the rotor, and that saves a lot of money compared to a rim brake wearing through your very nice carbon rim. So I have an ETAP group set on this, and it was super easy to set up. All the cables are internally rooted, and it's kind of once you've built the bike, it's very low maintenance. I'm dreading the day when I have to change the headset <laughs> or do some maintenance on it, because everything does go through the bars and the frame. But I mean, it just looks so clean. And I suppose that's the first thing I was gonna to talk to you about. It's got everything you'd expect from a higher end bike. It has full integrated bar stem combo. The cabling, like I say, is internally rooted, like full internal cable routing. You can see a tiny bit of cable by default, and then a tiny bit here coming out where it joins to the rear caliper. That's literally it. You can set it up with like Shimano or ETAP. And I do believe you can get cables running through. I'm not sure how smooth the shifting is, when you use cables going through internally rooted. But I imagine there's some sharp angles in there. So the price of this frame set is, I think it's around $1,300. So you're looking about a thousand pounds and you can order it from the UK. So when you compare this to like another aero frame from other brands and you're looking at quite a few hundred pounds, if not thousands cheaper than, than an alternative. But is it worth it? Is it gonna break? Is it gonna fall apart? Is it any good? Or do you stick with something that you know? And that's why people buy from big brands. They have that peace of mind, you know? Whereas like, Yo-Yo, it's, it's less heard of, so people are more anxious about it. The frame has a three-year warranty, like the wheels are warrantied. It's like all tested, UCI approved wheel set, and then the frame's been vigorously tested. Like everything's proper tested, you know? It's a really high quality bike. The paint job, the finish, the geometry, like there's so many small touches that I'm gonna talk you through that I really, really like on this bike. So apart from the frame, when you buy one of these, you do get the seat post and the bars. The seat post, this is, this is something that I love. And so the seat post has your classic like up and down adjustment like all seat posts, but it also has this like forward and back, fore and aft adjustment. So you can really fine tune your position on the bike. Like yes, you can use the saddle rails to move your seat forward and backwards, but sometimes you'll find that you're either at the tips or you're over the limit mark. And this eliminates all of the need to actually use your saddle rails to get the right position. You can put your saddle in the middle, it looks really clean. And then you can just simply undo two Allen key bolts and you can slide the whole thing forwards or backwards. So it's really easy to set up the bike in that perfect position. So seat post does do up by this tiny little bolt in here. These bolts scare me, I'm gonna be honest. I much prefer a seat post clamp, but obviously it's not as clean looking and this like really keeps the lines looking all clean and you get this like little rubber bike condom to put on top to keep all of the, the water out. I wish there was like a bung or something I could put in that looks a bit cleaner because it just looks really nice and I don't know if this like spoils the aesthetic slightly. So this is like my first gripe, this rubber thing kind of spoils the aesthetic ever so slightly. Like I said, you get the handlebar stem combo, you can choose your stem length, you can choose your bar width. 
It's got a really nice drop on the bars. A nice set of bars and honestly, no flex. They feel really stiff and then you get a really cool like out front mount with them as well, which is nice and then it will fit basically all bike computers. So you don't need to worry about if you're using a Wahoo, a Garmin, a Brighton or whatever, there's a mount that will fit on there. So should you spend 1,300 pounds on this or should you go and buy something else? So I think the last bike I bought was a Specialized Alley disc and I got that as a complete. And I think it was like 2,000 something, I can't remember how much money it was. But I really liked the geometry of the frame and I wanted it as a crit bike. I had an ETAP group set to put on it. Had I have just spent the money on this frame set, I'd have saved thousands of pounds because I did already have a group set. I had a wheel set already, but I ended up buying a complete bike with a 105 group set to then switch out. I did sell the 105 group set, made some money back, put the ETAP on and my old wheels. So I could have bought a frame that was probably at least, at least twice as cheap as the LA Sprint and build it up like this. And I'd have saved like, <laughs> saved loads of money. I don't want to think about how much money I'd have saved if I'd have bought this frame instead of the Specialized. But that's why I'm telling you, I hadn't ridden these bikes at this time. I knew these bikes existed, but I'd never ridden it. I'd seen like Yodio, I'd seen like Windspace, but I'm sure like a lot of you guys, I was unsure. Like, you know, I'm gonna spend like what? Like a thousand, three hundred pound on a frame and a thousand pound on a wheel set that might just, I don't know, explode when I'm riding on them. And there's only so much research you can do on the internet to find out if they're decent, if they're any good. So it's a bit of a minefield out there. So my question was, would I buy it? Sorry, just going off on a tangent. I'd buy it, 100%. And people ask me, would I buy this or would I buy the wind space? I'm very drawn between the two. Like they both have different things that I like about them. Both the companies make a very similar product. The wind space and the Yolios, same carbon fiber, very similar layup, same price point. Their factories are basically like next door to each other. And there's a lot of similarities between them. But let's be honest, like you look at a Specialized, a Cannondale, a Cervelo, they all look similar aesthetically. Like aero frames look very similar nowadays. So aesthetically, ticks the boxes, right? I think so. What do you think? Does it tick the boxes? Does it do it for you? Do you go, oh? I mean, I look at this bike still and I'm like, damn, that's a nice looking bike. And so if you're buying this frame, you are gonna be looking at buying a wheel set. Wheel set again very affordable but then if you're whether you're buying like yodio stayer other brands like hunt there's a lot of companies out there that make very very good wheel sets for around the 1000 pound mark i think you just noticed that when you buy stuff direct from china because they're cutting out a lot of the like the middleman stuff and you're dealing direct that you get a much higher quality product for a much lower price you know it's like a special seat post is like 300 quid like, why is it 300 quid? You don't get that when you buy direct from China. So I think that's why a lot of people are looking at Chinese brands rather than these like current mainstream ones because you're paying for a logo. That's what you're paying for. So if you want to know what comes in the box, all that stuff when you buy it, I've done an unboxing video before, I'm not going to recover that, but I'll put links down below so you guys can check out those videos if you're interested about the build and you want to know more about all that sort of stuff. But I will run you through it really quickly. So I am running like yeah, the R12 frame set, it is the Yolio Pilot wheels. The wheel set is 48 mil deep, around 48 mil. I don't know if they're 45, so they come up at about 48. Then I have my Goodyear Eagle F1 tires on, obviously. Bar stem combo, SRAM ETAP group set, the old electronic one, not the new Axe this one so it's an 11 speed fabric saddle my power meter is the power tap p1 pedals so i think that is that is it pretty much in a nutshell oh and a funky carbon bottle, bottle holder from essor it weighs 8.2 kilos right quality smooth buttery smooth even with a deeper wheel an aero frame it's comfortable I'd actually say that it's more comfortable than my steel frame from Steyr. The aero tubing gives you a lot of stiffness but it seems like it has a really nice balance of being stiff but also having flex and it kind of absorbs a lot of the vibrations. You don't seem to lose power because of the stiffness. Like a lot of the time if you're riding on a very bumpy road and you're out the saddle and if the frame's really stiff, you can feel it judders around a lot and you can't really get the wheel planted and you end up running lower pressure because obviously when you run tubeless, tubeless ready wheels by the way, you run lower pressure, you still get that weird bounce because the frame's really stiff. Don't get that with this frame. It's actually really compliant. It takes out a lot of the vibrations, absorbs all the little bumps, but yet when you want to get up and sprint out the saddle, it doesn't have like any annoying flex. So the way they've laid out the carbon and they've built the frame, I assume is how they've tackled that and made it perform in quite a nice way. So on some frames, I do feel a bit of flex in the bottom bracket or I'll get the wheel catching on the stays if the wheel's got like a bit of flex in it or the frame's got a bit of flex in it. It absorbs all the harshness of the road, but yet when you get on a nice smooth tarmac surface, it feels like an absolute rocket. It's so fast. This weighs 8.2 kilos complete and these pedals weigh like 500 grams. It's a size 56. 
I have like a 42 width bar with a 110 mil stem and 45 mil deep wheels. So, you know, 8.2 kilos, not bad at all. And it rides like a dream. So yeah, there you go, there's my like, long-term review, I guess, of the Yolio R12. So this video has not been influenced by Yolio. I'm not being paid by Yolio to promote this video. They did give me the frame set for free, but this was like months ago. And um, they never asked me to do a long-term review, but you guys will obviously want a long-term review. And I feel that because I don't have a connection like to Yolio, they don't sponsor me, they don't sponsor the channel, that I can give you a very unbiased review. I don't like the flappy bit here, and I don't like the seat bolt clamp. But the seat bolt clamp I understand, because it looks really nice and clean. But why would you make this like really potentially clean line, and then slap a horrible bit of rubber on top? Surely there's a nicer, cleaner way of doing it. But anyway, that's me nitpicking. But on the whole, lovely bike. So I will link to Yolio down below, and some of the old videos if you want to check those out. Thanks for watching, remember to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys very soon, bye.